Hello everyone. In this video, we're actually going to cover a couple of topics. Uh, the first topic is going to be how to use Desmos, and the second is how exponential functions look when you actually graph them. So without further ado, let's go ahead and open Desmos. Now a great way for you to do it is just to open a tab and type in D-E-S-M-O-S. -S. Uh, the very first thing that should pop up is desmos.com slash calculator, but if it doesn't pop up for you, uh, then you can just click, let's say, Desmos. And it should be the very first option, Desmos Beautiful Free Math. So let's go ahead and click on the graphing calculator since we're trying to work on graphs. So now that we have Desmos open, we're going to go ahead and look at this graph. Uh, and it shows from negative 10 to positive 10 on the x and from about negative 8 to positive 8 on the y. Now let's go back to our actual problems uh, from the slide before. And let's take a look at what we want, because we're going to want to actually change the way that this graph looks. The first equation we have is y equals 1,000 times 1.35x, or 1.35 to the power of x, and y equals 500 times 1.6 to the power of x. Now, we've already actually investigated both of these, and we found that over time, uh, this one is going to give us more money as a financial plan, whereas this one starts off much larger. So let's go ahead and use these two on Desmos and see how they look as graphs. Now, as I mentioned before, these aren't actually the best of scales to use because we're dealing with numbers that start in the 500s and 1000s. We also know that we won't, um, or that it starts at zero. So going anything more negative than zero as far as an X value is actually not gonna be very useful as well. So let's change those. In order to change them, you click this little icon in the top right corner, which looks like a wrench. Now down below, you're going to see your x-axis and your y-axis. Well, you know our x-axis doesn't have to be anything larger than zero, or anything shorter, smaller than zero. So let's actually change that to negative two, so we have a little bit of breathing room. And we also know we're only looking at six months, so let's just change this to eight to give us again some breathing room. Uh, as far as the y-axis goes, let's go ahead and change those. We know that the lowest possible value can have is 500, so let's just type in 400 here. Again, just to give us a little bit of extra room. Whereas our largest it's gonna be is, it was a little over 8,000, so let's just go 9,000. Okay, that's all we really need to do. We now have axes that go from uh, 400 down here, all the way up to 9,000 up here. And our x values, which start at zero here, we have negative two all the way to positive eight. Well, these are gonna be great axes for us to take a look at our problems with. So let's go ahead and type them in. Now remember, the first one is 1,000 times 1 1.35 to the power of x. So let's type that in. y equals 1,000 times uh, 1.35. And now what we need to do is take it to the power of x. Remember, we can do that by hitting shift six and x. And you're gonna see our graph. That starts at 1,000 and you'll see it starts to climb, 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 and then somewhere around here really starts to shoot up. So this was our very first function, the one that ended up being not as effective as the second one. Let's type the second one in and see how they look next to each other. So y equals, it was 500 times 1.6, again, shift six, to the power of x. We can actually see right around here is where it begins at 500, and it goes, 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 and somewhere right around here, it crosses our first function and shoots on up. So again, up until right around the fourth month, the first equation is actually gonna be better. But then just a little bit after the fourth month, right at about the $3,401.97 mark, this one actually surpasses the first one. Now let's take a look at each of these separately and kind of just uh, compare them. So if we take a look at the first one, we definitely, like I said, start kind of small and then it starts to shoot up around here. If we actually zoom out even more, you can see it's gonna to continue to get bigger and bigger and bigger. The same will be true with our second equation. We can actually put those next to each other again. Starts kind of gradual, but then starts to shoot up. This is actually how all positive exponential functions are gonna look. 
And we can use this idea, this sort of uh, picture in our heads of what they should look like to sketch them out a little bit later, which is something we're going to be doing not too long from now. This actually concludes this tutorial video.